one thing about me is that I come from a background that is encompassed many different backgrounds, right? And I feel like in today's society, people equate success with the wrong thing. A lot of times when you think about a successful person, most people think about actors or basketball players or singers or it's always fame or fortune. But if you define success, you go to Webster's Dictionary or dictionary.com, they say that success is the achievement of one's goal. That's it. Nothing about money, nothing about fame. It's an achievement of a goal. So what's the goal? So let's say this. Uh, I'm like, hey, this event was dope. I want to go to Atlanta for the next one. Cool. I'm not just going to get there. Every goal needs a plan. So in order to get there, I have to start taking positive steps towards making that happen. So I say, when is it? OK, it's October 21st. Um, it's at this address. Cool. Start looking up plane tickets. Where am I going to stay? How am I going to get to the airport? What am I wearing? And that is the plan. So the goal needs a plan. I feel like a lot of people nowadays don't ever put their goal to action. There's no plan. There's no steps behind it. People say, I want to do this. I want to be a, a creator. I want to own my own company. I want to be a CEO. And then they sit there like it's just going to happen. They think that Instagram videos and little self-help books is enough to make it happen. And the reality is that it isn't at all. So I want to get to my next point. The importance of a good work ethic. So I got a friend, all right? Uh, I'm not going to say a name just in case this gets anywhere. I don't want him to know I was talking about him. But um, he is, how old is he? 24 years old. He wants to be an NBA player, basketball player. So one, that's like crazy. You're 24. You don't play for any teams. Never went to, like, all right. But if you say so, I'm going to support you. Um, but yeah, he wants to be an NBA player. So look at me. How am I cooking you on the court and you want to go to the NBA? Doesn't make sense, but you know why? Work ethic. Because how are you saying that you want to be a professional doing something and you're not taking the steps towards being a professional? How can you say you want to go to the NBA, but every time I hit you up to hit the gym, you got an excuse about why you can't go? A lot of people feel that you put in hard work when it means something to someone else. So if a person is there to possibly give you a job, that's when you work hard. If a parent is there on your back, that's when you work hard. If your friends are there and they, they, they're competitive or they're going against you, that's when you work hard. No, that's not the case at all. You work hard at every hour of the day. How can you want a full-time career with a part-time work ethic? Doesn't make sense. And unfortunately, a lot of people have that mentality. They're just waiting for somebody to come and give them what they want. It does not work like that. Another illustration. So let's say this. Let's say that I'm a basketball scout and I, I have my own AAU team. And I'm walking through a neighborhood at 5.30 a.m. and I see a little kid, he's about 10 years old, we're gonna call him Tommy. I see Tommy, it's like 5 o'clock, 5.30 in the morning, he's about 10 years old. His book bag is on the side, his books are on the side, he got a friend that's feeding him the basketball and he's in the park doing drills, 5.30 in the morning, step back. Y'all see the jump shot, <laughs> hold it for him. <laughs> 5.30 in the morning. As a scout, what do you think that means to me? Do you think that he knew I was going to be walking by and see the work that he was putting in and I was going to come by and say, wow, that's great. Let's give him a job. No, not at all. But because he was dedicated, he created the opportunity for somebody to recognize his worth, recognize the work ethic, and possibly put him in a place to succeed. And we didn't even say if Tommy was good. We just said that he was there. And that's the thing, people that have the opportunity or have the power to actually change your life, they want work ethic. Talent comes second. Because you could be the most talented person in the room, but if you do not have a good worth ethic, if it does not feel like we can rely on you, if I say be here at 10 and you're gonna show up at 11, nobody wants to waste their time. So that's one thing I wanna say, your work ethic. Make sure that you put in the work. There's something that I'm going to talk about later that kind of ties into this point. So when we get there, I'm going to just give y'all the look. The look is going to be, <laughs> all right, and hopefully y'all remember it. Um, next point, talk is cheap. <laughs> he likes that one. Oh, that's my man with the pants. I like his pants. Can you stand up real quick? Sure, why not? Look, those are dope. 
Those are dope. If they had those in midget size, I would buy a pair. All right? Those are dope. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Dang. I started something. <laughs> but talk is cheap, right? Let's say this. When was the last time that you was able to walk into a store and buy something with your words? I really like that bag. Hey, you know, that bag is real nice, and you're a great person. And I feel like you should give me that bag because I said you're real nice and you're a great person. No. Doesn't work like that. You cannot just talk about the things that you want to do. A lot of people will sit there for years. I, I have my, my uncle. He's like 51 years old. From the time I was four years old, he's been talking about he was about to lose five pounds this summer. <laughs> From the time I was four. Because that's what certain people do. They just try to speak themselves into wanting to do something. They speak themselves into wanting to change. I want to lose five pounds. I need to lose five pounds. But then they actually never do it. People do not care about what you say. It has no effect on a person that's ready to hire you. None whatsoever. You can say, well, yeah, I work great with others, and um, I'm, a, I'm a great people person. And, hey, I'm talking, man. Yeah, I'm very friendly. And... Um, <laughs> You have to be one about action, because like little Tommy in the park, you never know who's watching, you never know who's listening. I remember one time I was on set, and um, I was working on a Haunted Mansion, and no, Rewind. I was working on Story Little 2, um, and the director, for some reason, I didn't know he was the director. Now, this man was the man that pretty much hired me for the role, and I forgot that he was the director. So... I like modest people that don't really, they're not really flashy, they don't really, you know, dress too crazy, no jewelry, but I'm quick to snap on somebody. So he came and said, he had on like some, I don't even know what they were. They were like some, something on his feet. And they were like a mixture between some old rugged felines and some dirty converse. And um, I just started snapping. I was like, he got on Jesus slippers, look at him. <laughs> And uh, he laughed it off, and then he was like, ah, you funny. Yeah, you're a funny guy. And I was like, cool. So the first thing on set, you know, I'm working out, doing what I do. The other kids are laughing, they're joking, they're acting crazy, and I'm focused. And later on that day, he was like, hey, Mark. Um, well, he actually went to my father. He was like, we want to talk to your son about possibly doing another project. So I was like, oh, cool. Like, what project is it? So they brought me into Disney, the Disney Studios in L.A., and they had me audition for The Haunted Mansion. And the whole point that I'm making is that my work ethic on that first project led to other opportunities. A lot of times people feel that they can undervalue their work if they feel like the work isn't worth giving 100%. But you never know what something can turn into. You always give 100%. Always. Because you could be in Starbucks wiping a counter and a person that owns an estate can say, Hey, look, you, you actually take your job very seriously. You're very thorough. I want to hire you to clean my estate. And you never know. And, and I feel like too many people ignore those possibilities. Um, next thing, building strong relationships. You guys ever watch, like, Animal Planet? No, seriously. I'm not even being funny. Stop laughing. Everybody, anybody ever watch Animal Planet? Raise your hand if you watch Animal Planet. All right, cool. Like that. What do bees do? Bees live in a little community. And the hive builds the hive. I think that's what they call it, right? The hive builds the hive. Lions hunting packs. Wolves hunting packs. They stay with like-minded individuals. That's what a strong relationship does. One person cannot succeed on their own. It doesn't matter what it seems like. It doesn't matter if it seems like I got where I am because of me. It's never because of you and you alone. There's always somebody or something there that is supporting you, that is helping you grow, that is helping you achieve those goals once you have that plan. And that's what strong relationships do. Let's say this. I want to find out uh, information about Google and who to speak to if I want to get hired by Google. Now, I don't know how it works, because I'm an actor. So, you know, if there's anybody from Google in the room, I do commercials. <laughs> um, 
but I want to get hired by Google, right? So I'm doing my own research. I'm online for hours, hours at a time. Days go by, weeks go by, months go by, and still no success. I was doing it on my own. But now let's say this. Let's say that one of my friends knows a lot of things about networking, knows people that know people that know stuff. The other friend is good at doing research. Another friend is good at following through. Another friend is just good at supporting. Hey, you guys, remember, we got to do this today. Well, then now you have a team. So instead of one person spending hours a day to try to get something done, now you have a collective of four to five working as a team to achieve that same goal. And that's what strong relationships will do. Football, basketball, uh, baseball, all of these are team sports, even boxing. Even though there's one primary person in the ring, there is still a team, a core of people that are working towards the same goal, and that is to win. And I feel like a lot of people need to utilize more of that in life today. I would never sit up here and take credit for where I am. You know, it, it's my parents that are my foundation that really helped me get to where I'm at. And then my team of people. So speaking of my team of people, um, one of my biggest mentors is Eddie Murphy. And um, after we worked on the Haunted Mansion together, I befriended his son. I used to live with his family for about two years. And that man has taught me like so much in my life. And one day I'm, I'm at his house and it was up, I was upstairs. There was a lot of noise going on. So I walked downstairs and it was like every famous black actor that I've ever seen in my life just sitting at his, at his table. So I, I walked downstairs. I'm like half sleep. Will Smith is over there snap, snapping jokes. Martin Lawrence is over here. Damon Wayans is over here. Um, Paul Mooney was back there. And then Sylvester Stallone. That was like a weird. <laughs> I'm like, bro, they're all black. What are you doing here? You know? <laughs> But, and it just showed me, I was like, wow, that's crazy. Like, all the A-listers are with the A-listers. And one thing that Eddie's told my dad and myself, he was like, if you want to do something, be around people that's already done it. You know? And they don't have to be your friends, but those are who you should be looking to learn from. Because if you want to make $1,000, why are you talking to the guy that's only made a dollar so far? If you want to make 100000 you should be dealing with somebody that's made 100000 If you want to make a million, you want to be dealing with somebody that's already made a million. And why is that? Because experience. When a person has experience, when they know how to do something, now all you have to do is follow the same steps. Now, that does not mean that you're going to achieve the same outcome. But what it does mean is at least you're following a more realistic plan rather than you and three of your buddies say, let's do it. Now, back to team, and that's when your team comes into play because you've gotten the real nitty-gritty of what needs to be done from, by somebody that knows, and now the people that actually stand there, support you, that are trying to grow with you are now, help able, are now there to help you flush out that plan, and that's what relationships do. But now I'm going to get to my next point. Same thing, back to Eddie Murphy's house. Um, I had an audition for a project called Homie the Clown. And uh, it sounds crazy, but I wasn't going to be the clown. I was like this little boy in the joint. And um, Damon Wayans was directing it. I just saw Damon Wayans at Eddie's house. So I'm like, wow, that's crazy. Later on that night, here's Damon sitting in Eddie's house again. So I'm like, Mr. Murphy, Mr. Murphy, um, can you tell like Damon that I'm auditioning for Homie the Clown? I want to I wanna book it. Like, Can you put in a good word for me? And Eddie was like, I'm not doing that. Why would I do that? He said, everything that you've got, everything that you have achieved thus far is because of your hard work and your talent. Anything that a person gives you is rightfully theirs so they can take it back. But the things that you work hard for and the things that you earn are yours by right. If I told Damon to put you on, what is that doing for you? It's making you lazy. It's teaching you that you can shortcome your hard work, you can shortchange your talent, because now since you know somebody, everything is handed to you. What's the point? The point is balance. Understanding when relationships work and when it's time to just stop paying attention to who you know, put your head down, and grind. Make it happen yourself. Um, one, of, one of the biggest things that I've found in not just my industry, but just in all aspects of life, is that 
different challenges face us, you know, and we live in a society where everything is changing. You know, there's so many people that are voicing their opinions, um, whether it's smart and intelligent, whether it's helping us grow and evolve, whether it's negative, whatever the case is, challenges face us all, especially when you're working in a professional field. One of the best ways that I, I myself have like learned to deal with challenges is just knowing who I am. I feel like things around you or, or your landscape should not change who you are as a person. A lot of times people, how could I say it? People realize what's going on and they're not willing to really go with the flow. There's this negative, ignorant stubbornness that a lot of people have when certain things happen. For me, myself, accepting what you are or what you do or how something works is not changing who I am. It, it, it doesn't change a person to actually understand and realize that, okay, this is the way things used to be, but this is the way things are now, and I just need to adapt. I need to evolve. I need to move on because this is, this is the point. If you stay in your stubborn roots and if you don't make that change, people not changing anything for you. It's not changing at all. It's not for you. They're not going to say, okay, well, you know what, since you like uh, using Google more, then we're going to get rid of the Yahoo operating system. Who are you? And a lot of people get nowhere fast because they're stuck in their way. Back to an illustration. Let's say that I'm an NBA player, right? Um, and I have a problem with the way that they treat players after retirement. If I went to the news and I actually spoke about it, people are going to listen. You know why? Because I matter. I'm an NBA player. But let's say I never played basketball in a professional field a day in my life. And I'm talking about the way they're changing things and the way that things are going. Nobody cares. Because who am I? We don't even acknowledge you. We don't even recognize you as a person that matters for us to even listen to or give the time of the day. So why would I have a problem with something or voice a problem with something that I don't matter yet? I feel like a lot of times people make excuses for why they're not getting anywhere. So they'll talk about how things aren't fair and how uh, it's not right and the jobs go to this kind of person, the jobs go to that kind of person. And if that's the case, that's the case. But what does that mean for you? You're still unemployed. So stop paying attention to all of the things and all of the reasons why you're not getting anywhere and start focusing on what you can do. That takes me to my next point, perspective. We're going to start it like this. Can you guys see what I have here? What'd you say? Use that voice, girl. What'd you say? <laughs> there we go. She's like, I said a penny. <laughs> it's a penny. How much is a penny worth? <laughs> One cent. My man with the shades on. One cent. That's it. So let's say that I walked into the store and I had to buy something that cost one cent. Would you guys use this penny? You would, right? Makes sense. But I wouldn't. You want to know why? Because this penny was given to me by my father that was passed on to him by his father before he died. And this penny has been passed on to two generations of my family, and I look to pass it on to my son. So even though it's a penny to you, it's much more than that to me. This penny has way more value because of my perspective. The way that you see things is what gives things meaning. Simple as that. The way that you see where you're going, the way that you see where you're coming from, the way that you see the things that you want, the way that you tell yourself or the things you tell yourself you have to do is all based on your perspective. And your perspective is what makes you unique. It's what makes us different. It's one of the reasons why diversity is so important in all fields and all aspects of life. Because a person's perspective is built on what they have experienced in life. So let's say that um, I'm from the Bronx. That's, that's the truth. I'm from the Bronx, New York. Um, I'm not going to get ghetto up here, but I felt like throwing up the sign real quick. Um, <laughs> but I'm born and raised. I'm born and raised. Uh, my boy Derek, raise your hand, Derek. 
That's the, the ugly dude that just raised his hand. He's from, where are you from, Tennessee? Uh, born in Tennessee. Born in Tennessee, right? So if Derek wanted to know something about the Bronx and wanted to, say we have a business together and he wanted to appeal to a consumer base that's based in the Bronx, who knows better about the Bronx, him or me? Or him or I? I'm sorry, I got a little, him or I? It's me, because I'm from there. I relate to there. I know the culture. I know what people will buy. I know how people think. I have family there. I can easily reach out and talk to somebody there. But now let's flip it. Let's say she was on the other foot. I want to appeal to people in Tennessee. Same thing. He knows because he's from there. He relates to there. Now we're going to take it to the next step. We're going to talk about color, right? So. He said, I got time for two questions and rapping five minutes. I hate when people tell secrets like that. Like, everybody can see you whispering, man, but. <laughs> uh, but that's one of the things that diversity does. Diversity allows a company or allows a place or a business to tap into different walks of life, to different understandings, to different backgrounds, and it helps you to relate. One of the things being an actor is that I have to relate to certain feels to certain people, right? So if I'm in a Tyler Perry movie, the target audience is very different than if I'm in a movie with Emma Roberts. It's very different. And understanding that as an actor now changes the way that I have to perform. A lot of companies don't have that ability to change the way that they perform, even though they want to appeal to different feels. And that's what diversity does. The whole point is, don't feel like you have to change things about yourself or where you're from in order to, to, to work with the curve or to, to go along with the curve. Where you're from is what, is what makes you different. And a lot of companies now are looking for that in individuals to be different because now the world is so diversified. Let's not just, let, forget the United States. The world is so diversified and there's so many different walks of life that live in so many different areas. All people matter. You know, and, and, and fortunately, companies are starting to understand that. Me, myself, I'm from New York. My mom is from Brooklyn, and my dad is from Harlem, right? And yeah, 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 y'all could do that. Y'all could do that. <laughs> um, and, and one of the things that I realized, that your background is not just where you're from, it's who you're from. You know, your background is, is big on who you're from. Um, my mom is an educator. My mom has been a teacher for 30 years. Um, my dad started out as a photographer, and he gave me my start, and he actually used to work for Ogilvy and Mathers. I think that, I think they mentioned them. Yeah, he used to work for Ogilvy when, um, when I was younger, and he gave me my start. You know, and then my parents, my background is what made me what I am today. My dad got me into acting. My mom made sure that I stuck to the books. And now, here I am, Kevin Hart, standing in front of you <laughs> 27 years later. Um, but nah, so I see her doing like the little tiptoe up here. So this is how I, I want to end it, right? Um, back to actions. Always utilize your platform or your field or your, your scope of people or whoever's watching you to be a representation for who you are and where you come from. Right now, you guys are here looking for, for jobs, to be hired. It's the start of a new beautiful thing. And once you get it, don't slack. Don't slack. A lot of people, once they attain success, they stop doing what it took to get them there. They lose their drive, they lose their hunger, they lose their work ethic. And then before you know it, you're not putting out the same results. People are coming in replacing you because people are hungry. You know? And, and unfortunately, that's the way a lot of people are, but I feel like you guys are a little bit smarter than that. She's giving me like. I didn't do it. it. Y'all saw her, right? <laughs> I know I'm not bugging. Y'all saw her. Um, no, but on, an, on another note, um, I really just want to say this, right? It is 2017. Um, I'm not going to talk about our president, but I want to talk about our country just real quick. Um, we are a place of opportunity. We are a place where there's freedom. We have the right to speak. We have the right to express ourselves and embrace that. Don't feel like you can't because other people have a problem with it. You are who you are. Be proud of it. I'm Mark John Jeffries, and I approve of this message. <laughs>